Welcome to the Femininja Project. I am your host, Cheryl Ilove, middle-aged ninja hiding in plain sight, dedicated to restoring human dignity one person at a time and helping you unleash your personal power. Discover that it's possible to look like a woman, act like a lady, move like a ninja, and think like a warrior. And remember, men are always welcome on the Femininja Project. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Femininja Project and thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about how to create your own path in life, even if it conflicts with a path that others might have chosen for you and how to do it by using your divergent thinking and by tapping into your innovative spirit. And today's guest knows a lot about that topic. His name is Lon Jordan. He is an author, a youth motivational speaker, public figure, founder and owner of Sketched by Design. Lon has spoken to thousands of teens nationwide, has appeared on ABC News, hosted a national TV talk show for young adults, and has written numerous articles for education publications, including the National PTA Magazine, Our Children. Lon, welcome to the show. Hey, Cheryl, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to, to be a part of, of what you have created, uh, empowering other people to, to really uh, take responsibility for their life and really get to the next level. So I'm, I'm so excited I'm, and I'm really honored to be here in your presence and be a part of this, this podcast. Thank you so much. I'm just so honored to have you on the show. And you know, when I look at your, your profile and I read your bio and it's just so amazing, you've done so many wonderful things. And the first thing that pops into my mind and maybe our listeners right now is, wow, this guy's done it all. And it must've been so easy for him because you make it look easy. Well, the truth was or <laughs> is that it was not easy. And a lot of, I know, I know you, I'm sure you've heard this too before, Cheryl, that, that success is not a straight line, but it's literally zigzags. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like that's really what my, my life story has been and will continue to be because we're always growing. We're always having to adjust, adapt to our situations. And so for me, it started when I was about four and a half years old, my father left my home and over time, he stopped spending time with me by the time I got to seventh or eighth grade. My mom and dad were divorced. And so that took a large toll on me. I started actually hanging out with people that I shouldn't be hanging out with, doing things that I should not be doing. And it literally got to the point where it was so bad. I mean, the principal was calling a lot. And one time my mom was so terrified that she actually uh, came to my room and was like, you need to stop this behavior. Do you know what's gonna happen to you? You know what could happen to me, you know, <laughs> and all this type of stuff. And so, uh, you know, as a 14 year old, you're just kind of like, yeah, I get it, but you know, I still want to do me anyway. Uh, thankfully, I actually ended up going on a, a retreat for my for my church, and they basically talked about decisions that you were making. And so I made a decision uh, to to make to 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 do what I needed to do to get rid of my friends that were taking me down a path to nowhere, so that I can be successful and I can start getting to the place where I can start being effective in other people's lives. Of course, I didn't say it like that when I was 14, but <laughs> I understood uh, right from wrong. And mm -hmm. I understood what I needed to do to get to where I needed to be. And so I ended up joining a hip hop group called the Fearless Poets. It was a positive hip hop group. We traveled around Ohio, the state of Ohio, performing and educating youth and empowering youth. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I actually got a chance to do an all school assembly for my own high school when I was in, I think, in 11th grade. It was oh, like wow. 2,000 people. So that was really exciting, also terrifying at the same time. <laughs> but it was during these times that I was able to start developing my artistic abilities mm -hmm. because I naturally was a, a, a divergent thinker. I, and especially in the group, the, the culture that we created was a culture of innovation, being ourselves, being original. In fact, we, we kind of, didn't want to have anything to do with anything that was going along with mainstream kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, it really basically started a little bit of my mindset and my philosophy of how I approach life. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's good to be different just for being the sake of being different. I think different has to do with your substance mm -hmm. as a person. 
and what you offer uh, intellectually, uh, creatively, and also your own unique experiences and communicating those experiences to other people. Mm -hmm. And so those are some things that I learned. So I'm really curious about the divergent thinking because some of our listeners might never have heard that before. They're not sure what that means. So that I, if you can touch on that for a minute. And the other thing I just want you to emphasize, or maybe I want to emphasize, is that you were doing things differently, but you were doing it in a positive way for other people. Yes, correct. Uh, as far as my, when I, when I think of divergent thinking, I think that most people, when they shoot a bow and arrow, their objective is to, to get the target right in the middle, the bullseye. Mm -hmm. uh, and what divergent people think of is that, well, I'm not going to just take the arrow and shoot it into the bullseye. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to try to shoot it differently, maybe get shoot it off of a tree, off a house, and then get to the bullseye, right? So a lot of us want the same things. We just have a different point of view of getting there. Mm -hmm. And so for divergent thinking, it's really the ability to just think outside of the box and look at life differently, approach life differently so that uh, it really it really brings texture to people's lives. Divergent thinking, when I think of it that way, it built it brings uh, a sense of, oh, I didn't really think about it this way or I didn't really know I could do that. And a lot of times people don't see the fullness of themselves because they're not able to think, see themselves by thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should try this, expose myself to something new. Well, how do you know if you're good at something if you don't expose yourself to someone new, new environment, new people? It's terrifying. It's scary. It, it, it's like a fearful feeling. But getting to the place where you have the courage to expose yourself to new people and environments helps you learn more about yourself, helps you learn more about your gifts your, and your talents. Uh, and it enables you to have a broader perspective of other people, mm -hmm. broader perspective of the world. And that enables you to have the ability to adapt a little bit better. Okay, I, 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 I'm not used to this, this ethnicity over here, but now that I've been exposing myself to this particular background and culture, I am now able to, that's another tool in my toolbox where I'm able to be more effective now mm -hmm. in what it is that I feel that I'm called to do. And so, uh, and as far as the positive, aspects of the hip hop group. Uh, one of the things that was exciting was that, well, first of all, it's really difficult to make money uh, by being an artist. And when I say artist, it's a broad term. Uh, I don't mean it necessarily as somebody painting. Uh, it could be somebody painting, uh, but it could also be someone who is a dancer, someone who's creative intellectually, Mm -hmm. uh, it could be someone who is a performer or an actor. So there's different types of forms of artistry that, uh, that allow us to be creative. And so for me, uh, just being, being in a position where I was able to, I believe I was like 16 years old, I was able to make $65 per concert. And we weren't even really well known back then uh, at all. And so that just showed me the power of creating something different and packaging that, selling that, and showing the value proposition in that, and having people uh, pay for your services, and you're able to use your artistry to help other people and impact other people's lives. So I think that for me, that was an opportunity uh, where I was able to use divergent thinking and be like, okay, yeah, I might have the ability to write like a book or an essay, but to write lyrics and then apply that to a beat and be able to articulate my thoughts and my feelings through a beat to an audience. Like that's a form of artistry and divergent thinking that, that I personally resonated with, but also not everybody thinks about is a form of, 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 of artistic expression. And as a dancer myself, you know, I mean, I never did anything really like, like that, but there's something about getting in front of an audience. And even if you're not in front of an audience, just as you're going through the dance steps, even maybe creating your own choreography, there is an incredibly therapeutic um, benefit to yourself as you're doing it. And when you have something that you really feel, you know, you have created, when you take that to an audience, it, it's like they feel that same kind of healing energy or that same kind of, kind of empowerment just by being in the audience. 
Yeah, and you're absolutely, absolutely correct. Uh, and actually, I should have mentioned this before when I was talking about me being in a hip hop group, I actually wasn't able to be in the hip hop group until I started doing solo performances before I actually opened up for that group. Mm -hmm. And dancing was the first thing that I did. Mm -hmm. So just learning to dance and perform on stage. I did a lot of uh, uh, break dancing, urban choreography, pop locking. Uh, I even liked R&B choreography, those types of mm -hmm. things. And so that was a form of artistry that I did. And eventually I was able to get accepted into the group mm -hmm. and perform with them. And then I started learning how to write lyrics and those types of things. So it definitely was uh, an amazing experience for me. By the time I was 19, I felt it was time to leave the group and I went solo. So I started having backup dancers. I actually trained some 14 year old kids, <laughs> so 12, 14, 12, 13, 14 year old kids to, to learn the art of break dancing. And I actually taught them how to perform and do it on stage, not just in a, in a cipher, uh, which basically is a group of people that mm -hmm. formulate a circle and people go inside and they break dance or, or pop lock dance or whatever type of dance that they're doing. So, so for me, that was, that was a big step for me. And so that lasted for a couple of years. I ended up getting on national television and I was, and I actually got on for performing uh, one of my songs, Streets of Gold, mm. and it was a hip hop song. And I also did some break dancing. So it was it was for a label. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was uh, cable television, which was some years ago. So <laughs> for me, it felt like a long time ago. Uh, but anyways, I think it was like 20, actually, it was like, yeah, tw literally 20 years ago. And it was there that I got a chance to perform on a national stage. But at the same time, I ended up getting tendonitis in my legs. Mm. Uh, from my Achilles, my feet, my Achilles tendons, all the way up to my um, to my hamstrings, and so that was a really horrible experience. Uh, I ended up having to quit dancing, and I ended up taking off. At this point, I was actually in a community college. I ended up taking off a year, and I did absolutely nothing. I was sitting on my mom's couch. My mom was like, what are you doing with your life? And I was like, I don't really know. And I really can't tell you what I'm trying to do because I, I just don't know what to tell you. And so that frustrated my mom, who was a, who was a K through second grade school teacher, linear thinker. So mm -hmm. it just didn't sit well. And she's more old school when it comes to like the whole work ethic thing. And so, uh, so that didn't go well. And so after about a year of sitting around, one of my spiritual advisors told me that I should go off to college. I didn't want to go because I felt that if I were to go, then he would feel that he was correct about me not succeeding in my divergent <laughs> and my unique endeavors that I was pursuing. Uh, despite how I felt, I ended up going to college anyway. And I ended up, when I first got there, they said that I was able to host a, a TV show. And I said, oh, really? And I had no background in, in TV. And most African-American uh, children just don't have a background in that. That's not something that we're really exposed to too much, mm -hmm. but it was nice to be able to go in that environment and learn something new. And so I was already a, a pretty good communicator from being on stage and performing. But what that did was it taught me about the ins and outs of production. Because when I went on, when I went and did my first TV, uh, my first TV show was like shooting the pilot. I, uh, it ended up bombing so bad. It was horrible. And it wasn't bad because I was necessarily a bad communicator, but it was bad because I didn't understand the ins and outs of TV production. I didn't understand each person's position and role and how they, how, what it means for them to work together to, to create a good product. I had no idea about that type of stuff. Mm. And so I immediately went to work, started studying everything that I could. And eventually, within two and a half years, I went from two crew members to 42, and I was able to produce a really strong quality show uh, on a college level, which was which was really nice, a local level. Can I ask, how old were you at this point? I, <clears throat> excuse me, I was, I believe I was 21 when wow. I went down when I went down to Florida. Yeah, that's amazing. And there's just two other things I want to point out. I yeah, love no the. I love the fact that you said the art of break dancing, because it yeah. truly is an art and an incredible skill. And I think a lot of people might not have looked at it that way, especially when it first came on the scene. It was almost like, well, anybody could do it. It's no big deal. And then they started breaking out some of these moves and it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's to me, it, it is one of the most 
unique dance forms just because of the simple fact that you have the hip hop flavor that goes with it, the hip hop mm -hmm. style of dancing, but it also can incorporate gymnastics. Uh, it, it incorporates uh, a lot of a lot of different types of physical activities mm -hmm. that that aren't necessarily associated with hip hop, and it brings it brings all of that together, which is unique. Being able to do backflips. Uh, and I know in gymnastics, uh, just, just be doing, being able to, to, uh, to do all the different forms of things on there that I, I can't even describe everything, but all of the different things that, that even you can do in gymnastics, that, that is incredible. So adding mm -hmm. all of those elements together, uh, really helps to make a unique art form, in, in, which is break dancing, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's, I mean, I, gotten the respect that it deserves. So the other thing I wanted to ask you is about your spiritual advisor, because how important was that in helping you make a decision? Well, well, one of the things that, that I, for me, was growing up without a father. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of children that grow up without a father, they don't naturally w go out and ask someone, hey, can you mentor me? Mm -hmm. it's more so they feel a little bit weird about it or they're not really sure. And a lot of them have trust issues, which I can understand. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the spiritual advisors, uh, some of them were pastors. Some of them were uh, fathers who I felt really respected their families and provided for their families and, and really cared about their wives and wanted the best for their wives and, and encouraged their wives to be successful as well. So it wasn't just about them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I actually sought out people that I felt were successful, not necessarily just monetarily, but people that really could invest in, in my life. Mm -hmm. And so when I did that, that kind of helped add a lot of pieces to my life where I didn't really feel fatherless. Mm -hmm. And so those are some things that I really try to encourage other people is because a lot of times when, whether you're a woman or a man, when you don't grow up without a father, there's, there's a piece missing. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you can find it like in a, in a master, a sensei, you can find it in, you know, a fatherly figure uh, in the church. You can find it in the business world. Just people that have experience that are able to invest in you and share their life experience and really to help you to really grow and become mm -hmm. the person that is, that is unique to you. Mm -hmm. And so those are some things that, that I learned and some things that I, that I, uh, applied to my life. Mm -hmm. After I graduated from college, I ended up going home and becoming a youth speaker. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately slumped into like some type of depression because when it, it's interesting how you can leave one environment, go in another, expose yourself to something different. And that actually helps you to become different in different ways and you grow and then you come back to the same environment that you came from and, and you, you almost seem just so strange, so yeah. weird to people. You don't make any sense. And so I just remember saying, well, I don't understand why, why are you guys are working a job 40 hours a week when you can be creating your own business, you can be doing this. And of course they're looking at me like, well, <laughs> bro, like you're 20, I don't know, 24 years old. What do you know about life? You know, absolutely nothing. And the interesting thing about Cleveland, Ohio is that Cleveland, Ohio is more of an industrial, historically an uh, in, industrial city. Uh, you had a lot of school teachers here mm -hmm. and the medical field now is starting to boom. But there wasn't a whole lot of divergent thinkers in Cleveland. Like if you wanted to actually be successful, you go to California, maybe Florida or something like that, where it's a little bit more um, creative. Mm -hmm. I guess, creative type mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that, that I had to, I was really challenged with. And, and, it, and it brought me into a depression because I didn't understand why people didn't get me. I didn't understand why they couldn't see things from a different perspective. And I felt that I saw the holes in their life, mm -hmm. but they saw the holes in my life because even though I was probably, I was correct about certain things, I also didn't have certain life experience. And so I think they saw that as, as a deficiency. And so they kind of exploited that, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, and to a degree, as I get older, I told my mom, I think it was about a few months ago, I just literally told her, I, I, I get people that don't understand me more than I feel like they get themselves <laughs> because I've had no choice to understand them so that I can be successful and communicate to conventional thinkers mm -hmm. or people that don't really think outside the box or could, but they lost it after they were got older. And then the parents were like, hey, imagination, what are you talking about? You're not a kid anymore. Get a job, have a family, get a degree, settle down and retire. Right. And that's not that's not how I wanted to live my life. I, I mean, I really understand what you're explaining about talking about Cleveland and the industrial environment, because I grew up right outside of Pittsburgh. And that's how the thinking, you know, you went to, to high school and most of the guys would go right from high school to the steel mill. And it's just that's what everybody did. And then once the steel mill just, you know, disappeared, they were left with absolutely nothing. You know, and just trying to fight that way of thinking of this is how it's always been. This is what, you know, my family did. This is what you're going to do. I mean, it's just really hard to break that traditional mindset. So I really admire you for being able to do that and achieving everything that you have accomplished in your life, because it's pretty phenomenal to be able to go from that environment to this incredible amount of creativity. Yeah. And I think one of the things that people have to understand especially, I always, I always teach people, discover your unique design. My main message is sketched by design, which means you are unique by design for a specific purpose. That's actually the, the title of my book. It's the main mm -hmm. message that I have. I believe every one of us has a unique anatomy, personality, gifting, and intelligence that separates us from everyone else. And once we embrace our design and cultivate our design, you're able to find some type of purpose uh, in a sense of fulfillment with your life. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the difficult thing that people don't want, what they want is they want to be unique and be themselves and do what they want to when they want to do it. But most people aren't willing to be alone at first and not be accepted. Mm -hmm. Most people want to be accepted. It's something inside all of us that wants to be accepted, appreciated, and and have our unique qualities and characteristics appreciated. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out as we get older that that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. Your family gives you a hard time from being different. Your friends around you, depending upon what type of friends you have. So, I mean, not everybody grows up in an artistic environment where you have, you know, if you're a band, you're hanging around all band members or you're, you're a dancer, you're hanging around all dancers. It's not always like that. And even if you go to that environment and you come home, you're still alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you exactly. Know? And you have to battle with that. And so I just didn't really encourage people to really ask themselves, do you want to be happy? I don't even like the word happy. I say joyful and, and live a purposeful life over the long haul. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to please everybody in the, in temporarily and then long term, you are empty, you're bitter, you're angry mm -hmm. because you didn't fulfill the unique purpose that you have in your life. And when I say purpose, I'm talking about your reason for existing, mm -hmm. why you were here on, your, on this earth. Everybody, I believe, was born at a specific time for a specific reason, for a specific purpose. And it is our duty and our responsibility as human beings to discover what that purpose is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are told to, when we get out of college or get out of high school, pay your bills, provide. Yes, those things are important, but should I sacrifice my long-term purpose for something mm -hmm. that I hate mm -hmm. now and, and keep doing things that I hate when that's not necessarily going to give purpose to myself. And it's not going to empower my family to be, to, to live a purposeful life. In fact, it's going to encourage them to be insecure, insecure mm -hmm. with having courage to step out and try new things, insecure to see that taking a different form of action can breed about uh, an effective result. Mm -hmm. And so I always like that uh, Back to the Future. I, I actually love that movie and how the father, when he didn't stand up to, to Biff, <laughs> what he became later on in life. Right. But when he stood up to Biff, he was an author. He empowered his, his children to, 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 to uh, embrace uh, the this, this success for their unique design. Right. And, and they just had a whole different mentality, a whole different way of looking at things. And he said to, uh, to Marty McFly, he's like, <laughs> Look, son, look what I did with this book. 
I'm sure I did this to show you, I'm paraphrasing, right. uh, that you can do anything if you put your mind to it, <laughs> you know? And I just felt that that was so profound. You know, um, e even to this day, when I watch it again, my favorite part is when Marty wakes up after being, you know, all these travels and stuff back to the future. And he comes into the living room and his brother and sister are dressed up and they're eating breakfast. And then his parents come in and he actually faints. Exactly. <laughs> As a mom, you're so thin. It's just, it's hilarious. I know, right? And he but, almost was like afraid to ask them like questions, like <laughs> what happened? Like, <laughs> but it, it does go to show you when you do stand up for yourself and you find your voice, you stand your ground and you do take that life's path that is meant for you, the richness of your life compared to the emptiness that it could have been. Yeah. And it is so important that we discover our unique design and our, and our unique purpose uh, because in actuality, it's really not about us. Mm -hmm. It is to a degree because self-discovery uh, can enable you to impact other people's lives and help other people to be self-introspective and develop personally. But our purpose and our reason for existing is really to help other people with the, very, the unique gifts and the leadership within that gift that we have mm -hmm. and helping them to become more and embrace the greatness that is unique to them. And mm -hmm. one of the things that's, that I think is really frustrating, uh, especially, and I, and, I, and I was able to actually substitute teach actually, as well as teach uh, in the public school system. And it sometimes can be very frustrating because it's like a one size fits all approach. Mm -hmm. You know, you all have to learn math this one way. And I really don't want to blame the teachers because in actuality, they're just, they're implementing what they're told to implement, how they're meant to implement it. Mm -hmm. Or the management style that they're supposed to implement the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really blame them. And some of them are very, a lot of them are frustrated because they, they know that each child is different and they need to approach each child differently. But the way the system is set up, you can't really do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so for me, it's just, I want, I don't like a one size fits all approach. And I don't feel that it would, it will help everybody in our society become better and function better when we're not encouraged to think creatively. I mean, they're taking like some of the, the, the arts are being taken out of the schools, Yeah, you know, for the sake of, of federal funding, those types of things. And, you know, some of it's music, art art class, uh, and there's so many different, uh, some extracurricular activities that are being taken out of some schools as well. Sometimes it's like, a lot of, sometimes it's lack of funding, levy doesn't pass, those types of things. But it's, it's really frustrating because it doesn't teach kids to think creatively or think outside the box about life, about what they're going through and about themselves. Mm -hmm. And that really hinders people from being able to find purpose, their unique purpose, and, and, and help other people discover their unique purpose. And so it, it, it can be definitely frustrating. Uh, and I don't, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and just knock the public school system because the public school that I went to had an enormous amount of diverse activities that you mm -hmm. can do. I mean, they had mm -hmm. dancing, performing, uh, they had public speaking classes, uh, what, you know, wood shop, they had, uh, mechanics, cosmetology. So when I went to school, I mean, sky's was sky's the limit when I was in public school, but I know that not every public school is like that in some low socioeconomic areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of them definitely don't have a lot of the, the creative extracurricular activities. And so, I feel like it's so important for us as, as human beings when we have families or if we even if we never have a family to be able to encourage divergent thinking in others mm -hmm. because we are applying that to our own life mm -hmm. and living it out in front of other people. So I'm really curious when you do your motivational speaking to youth groups, um, how do you present this information? Is this what you talk to them about or what's kind of like your signature speech when you do talk to your youth groups? So, so just so you know, uh, a lot of the, the, the speaking engagements that I was being paid to, to present uh, we're in, we're actually in public school districts for a while. Mm. I was doing all school assemblies in the public schools. Some of them were youth groups. 
uh, and some of them were, were nonprofit organizations or something mm -hmm. like that. So uh, the main message I had or have is sketched by design. My message, my, my audience has grown to, to adults and young adults now, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about my YouTube channel in a little bit. Uh, but I'm not saying something that Generation Z or uh, millennials don't understand. They get it because a lot of them don't like being pigeonholed. They, they, they want to be very self-expressive. A lot of them are very artistic and they, they really don't want to follow something just because an adult tells them to follow it. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of get it. Uh, but I think the, the, the difficult thing is that whenever you're dealing with nonprofit organizations or schools or, or, or even like churches and youth groups and things like that, there's still gatekeepers there. Mm -hmm. And if they can't make sense out of your message or they don't feel that the message is relevant to their students, uh, they're not going to bring you in. And so one of the things that I noticed when I was when I was getting into speaking was that there was a lot of gatekeepers. And because I had a different message, it was very hard to get in different places. It was it was very discouraging. Uh, very frustrating. And I even paid thousands of dollars for how to become a youth speaker courses. I did all of that type of stuff that entrepreneurs, you know, seed money, you know, <laughs> all that, type, that type of stuff. And yeah. I did all that stuff. And it only brought about so many results. It, because of the simple fact that I don't think that 15 years ago, in my opinion, society was ready for a lot of divergent thinking because they didn't necessarily feel like they needed it to be effective in their current way that they live mm -hmm. or the way they work or the goals and dreams that they have. Uh, so now it's different because if you don't adapt, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you don't know how to use vid uh, video, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're done. So all of these, the, the, the whole, the whole cultural landscape technology, technologically, has changed. And so, yes, I did get paid to speak. Yes, I did do my message, uh, communicate my message sketch by design to, to a lot of the, the various organizations that I talked about or the public school system. But now I am excited because we have social media that is completely boomed over the past 10 years. YouTube is the second largest search engine on the planet next to Google. Actually, Google bought YouTube. So 67, I believe it's 67% of user uh, of people that use YouTube are searching for answers to problems that they're having. Mm -hmm. It's not just by looking at, you know, people jumping off of a roof to in the pool for viral, you know, entertainment, yeah. but it's literally, how do I eat healthy? type that in in the search bar and then all these videos come up and the cool thing now is that you can be someone with 50 subscribers and be at the top of a search that somebody types in because people are watching your videos they like them and they're suggested by youtube and i don't want to get too technical and all that stuff but the opportunity now is endless and the other reason i was gonna i brought this up was because my message sketch by design, I did not want to water it down for the sake of, of what other people think. I wanted to communicate my message the way that I wanted to communicate things and not have to hold anything back or change things just to appease an organization or a company. I want to be myself, say what I want to say. And if people resonate with it, cool. If not, at least I'll go to my grave knowing that I I was doing me, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not taking the responsibility away from me learning how to effectively communicate my artistry in a way that conventional minds will receive it. I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying, though, is that it's important for us to embrace who we are so that other people can be confident embracing who they are. And so that collectively, all of our unique designs will collectively have a better uh, society because of it. Mm -hmm. That is just beautifully said. And especially and now I really get the sketched by design, you know, brand and logo. Um, yeah, that's just so amazing the way you said that. 
And I want you to talk about your YouTube channel because that's basically how I found you. I hope you don't mind. I kind of did stalk you a little bit. Um, you know? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it's uh, good. Um, but when I, I don't know how I found that one first video and probably maybe just 15 seconds in, you had me. You had me hooked. And it was about, you know, negative people or people trying to tell you that you can't do something. You know, they're trying to hold you back and don't listen to them. It, it was just so amazing. So tell us about your YouTube channel, because I've uh, since then have looked at a couple of other videos, not as many as I want, um, but you're definitely like top on my list. It's like, do I need a little bit of motivation? Oh, I know where I'll go. I'll look at one of Lon's <laughs> videos. That's awesome. Yes, my so my my YouTube channel is called Sketched by Design. And I actually do a lot of different videos talking about different topics. I do my best not to veer off and talk about something that's not in my lane. I feel like all of us should know what our lane is, our areas of expertise and what areas that we have authority in. Uh, but I do talk a lot about how to deal with losing your job, mm. how to navigate uh, being laid off in the middle of a recession. Mm -hmm. I talk about how to find your purpose and also how to find your purpose in your career. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have that, how to create a career that is a unique fit and the right fit for you. And I talk about the difference between gifts and skill sets. And let me just uh, talk a little bit briefly about this. It is so important to understand the difference between a gift and a skill set and how to apply these in our life so that we can be successful in our life and career. A gift is a natural ability that you are born with that you don't have to learn because it's already a part of who you are and how you're wired. A skill set is a learned competence through training. So in other words, learning a skill on the job. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a, a, a skill to know how to use a computer. Uh, it could be customer service, right? How to answer customers that are that are angry and frustrated with you that aren't even trying to hear what you're trying to say right those are skills that you can learn in communication to to reach them and help their problems to be solved so there's so many different skills that you can learn on a job and it's really what i believe a job is for a job is not useless a job actually helps entrepreneurs to be successful if you take the time to learn what you need to and also still have a vision for your life and know how to apply it later on for your long-term vision Mm -hmm. But a skill set is a learned competence through training. A gift is, is a natural ability that you are born with. A gift can be developed. It can't really be learned because it's already a part of your DNA. It can be developed and a skill can be learned and honed. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are the two differences between a gift and a skill set. Knowing your gift is a, part, is, a, is a large part to understanding your life purpose. If you don't understand what your gifts are, how are you going to have the confidence to function in knowing who you are as a person, uh, let alone help somebody else? Mm -hmm. your, in your gift is where your leadership is. And so I really believe a leader is, is, no, is a person that influences other people. That's really what a leader is, a person that has the ability to influence other people. Your greatest amount of influence comes from you knowing what your gift is and being able to communicate that. For me, I know uh, that, my, that my gift, one of my gifts is communicating, okay? There, there are some skill sets that can be attached to that gift, but the ability to connect with people and persuade people with your words, mm -hmm. that part is a gift. The skill set and knowing how to communicate to different ethnicities, mm -hmm. different groups of people, that's something that's learned through on, on the job training. Okay. And so every one of us has some type of unique gift. If somebody has the gift of singing, they have the ability to sing, whether they've taken music, I'm sorry, voice lessons or not. Mm -hmm. But if they have voice lessons, it teaches them the technical ends and helps to hone and develop the gift that they have so they can be even more effective mm -hmm. in connecting with the other person that's listening to them singing. So basically what you're talking about is also a communication skill. It's talking about relationships with people. Yes, definitely. And one of the things that, that people don't really fully understand is that the best relationships come from people that have the ability to hear the other person's perspective, 
listen, internalize it, and be able to communicate that back to the person that's talking to them, and then being able to share their perspective of what they're feeling Mm -hmm. in regards to whatever situation. Communication skills are so essential in in every area of life when it comes to business, communicating with your spouse, significant other, uh, when it comes to communicating with children, doesn't matter what it is. But the issue is, if I'm not willing to listen and understand you, how can I effectively communicate to you? And so, yes, I do believe that uh, communication, the gift of communication can be a gift, but I also think that it can be learned. There's mm-hmm. certain skill sets that can be learned that, can ha- that everybody can apply to help them to have a more fruitful relationships with the people around them. I honestly think that we could change the world if we all learned how to communicate with each other. That is true. I absolutely agree with that. Communication skills are so vital uh, to, to success. And I actually study a lot of great communicators over the years and just study what, what is it about them that they're able to communicate to mass masses of amount, amounts of people. And the one thing that I learned was that they they have an ability to connect with people because they understand where they're coming from and they're able to use language that the average person understands and connect to their feelings with that language and that's how they're able to communicate that's one of the ways that they're able to communicate to large groups of people is understanding the language of the people and understanding what they're thinking feeling and understanding their heartbeat and communicating to that heartbeat because their heartbeat matches the people who they're meant to, to meant to to influence. Wow, the art and the heart of effective communication. That's powerful. Well, Lon, I tell you, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I know. I'm like I am so amped right now. And uh, and just so anyone that's listening, uh, if you go to YouTube and you and you type in sketched by design, uh, you will see my videos come up. And they're really to help people to discover their unique design so that they can be successful in the 21st century marketplace. It helps you with your purpose, helps you cultivate skill sets with your career, and it helps you to find or create a career that is designed specifically for you. And then what about your book? My book is called Sketched by Design, which I'm excited about as well. And you can actually get that book on Amazon amazon.com you just type in sketched by design and put in lon jordan l-o-n and then jordan like michael jordan j-o-r-d-a-n and you will be able to purchase that that book as well you can also there is also a link in my youtube channel in the about section if you scroll all the way down you'll be able to find my book sketched by design and you're able to purchase that book there and this book i'm really excited about it because this is a book that talks about things that most people are not talking about. And, and what I mean by that is most people talk about, well, I should say most people, a lot of people talk about how to market your business, how to market yourself, how to find a job, how to find a career, but very few people talk about how to understand yourself, how you're wired, what your purpose is, what your design is, so that you are able to pick relationships that complement you, pick a career that complements you, pick a business that complements you, and pick a career that complements how you're wired. And I teach you how to do that in this book. Also, the YouTube channel, all the the videos on there teach you to do the same thing. And the last place place that you want to be is in a career or even in a relationship that is not a good fit for you because you picked it with a premature understanding of yourself. So having a thorough understanding of yourself will help you to align your purpose and align your gifts and skill sets in such a way where it connects with the, where you're able to pick a career or create a career or business relationship that is complementary to who you are as a person. Well, you're not the only one who's amped right now because you really have me fired up and I'm going to be buying your book as soon as I get back online. And, you know, Lon, you are so full of energy and amazing information. You're such an inspiration. And thank you so much for being here. 
I, like I said, I could talk to you all day long, but that would kind of be a long episode. So <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you again so much for being with us today. And thank you so much for having me. And I'm so honored to be here and be able to share my thoughts and ideas uh, with your with your viewership. Well, thanks again. And everybody, thank you so much for listening. And do check out Lon's YouTube channel. Check out his book. The man is amazing, as you can tell. And really take the time to find your own path in life and use your diverse thinking and your innovative spirit to find the life that you really love and deserve to have so you can not only fulfill yourself, but you can actually fulfill and help others. And that is the way of the Femininja. And that's a wrap on another episode of the Femininja Project. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, be safe, be strong. And until next time, bye now.